one of the most famous events to occur inside of British history, was a plot devised to blow up the Houses of Parliament and King James I and his government, along with the royal family. The plot was close to being carried out, and was hours away from disaster, until Guy Fawkes was caught in the undercrofts of the Houses of Parliament, armed with a slow match and over 30 barrels of gunpowder. It was clear what his intentions were, and following his arrest he was tortured, and then sentenced to death by a trial, in which a number of his co-conspirators were also condemned. But Guy Fawkes' execution did not go as well as it could have, as he escaped the executioner in his own cunning way, evading the hangman's noose whilst he was still alive. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Guy Fawkes, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The gunpowder plot was planned to blow up the House of Lords on the state opening of Parliament on the 5th of November 1605. James I, a king who had been ruling for a couple of years, would have been blown to kingdom come, as would his royal family, and the conspirators wanted James's nine-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, to be crowned as a Catholic Queen of England. The principal aim was to kill James, and the other targets inside of the royal family and the government, along with key members of the Privy Council and the House of Commons. If this would have occurred, then the repercussions would still have been felt today centuries on, as the monarchy would have technically fallen. But the man who is best remembered for being involved in the plot was Guy Fawkes, the man who was caught inside the Houses of Parliament, armed with the gunpowder. Guy Fawkes was raised a Catholic, and he had embarked on a military career in Europe. Fawkes joined Sir William Stanley, another Catholic commander, and joined the fight alongside Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, and his expedition to the Netherlands, during the reign of Elizabeth I. Fawkes became a junior officer and fought well, and was considered a possible captain, but then he travelled to Spain to try and raise support for a Catholic rebellion in England. He occasionally used the Italian version of his name Guido, and he then began to dissent against King James I, who he deemed was a heretic. It was in 1604 that Fawkes became involved with a collection of English Catholics led by Robert Catesby, who planned to assassinate James I. Fawkes was described as a pleasant man of approach and of cheerful manner, opposed to quarrels and strife, and loyal to his friends. He was considered a well-experienced military commander, and this won him lots of plaudits with the other conspirators. He was also described as a tall, powerfully built man, with thick reddish-brown hair, a flowing moustache in tradition of the time, and a bushy reddish-brown beard, and that he was a man of action, capable of intelligent argument, as well as physical endurance, somewhat to the surprise of his enemies. The conspirators first met on the 20th of May 1604 at an inn called the Duke and the Drake, on the Strand in London. Catesby led a chat and a talk about devising the plan to blot the king. Along with Fawkes were a number of other key Catholics, and one of them, Thomas Percy, gained access to a house in London, and Fawkes was made the caretaker of this house, under the identity of John Johnson. Whilst here the conspirators tried to dig a tunnel from this house to Parliament, and then place gunpowder in this, but they did give up on this plan when they heard a noise from above. This noise was that a nearby undercroft directly beneath the House of Lords was being cleared out. The plotters then leased this room, and it was considered a great hiding place for the gunpowder. To begin with, Fawkes stored 20 barrels, and then another 16. As the plague was ravaging London, the state opening of Parliament was pushed back to the 5th of November, and Fawkes did try to raise foreign support for a Catholic rebellion, and even possibly an invasion of England, which would back up the assassination attempt. Fawkes was the one who was placed in the position of trust as to light the fuse, leading to the gunpowder, and then he would escape across the River Thames to safety, all whilst a revolt inside of the Midlands would rise up, and capture Princess Elizabeth. But as the plot loomed closer, the conspirators were worried about a number of prominent Catholics, who would be at the state opening, and because of this one decided to inform Lord Monteagle, via an anonymous letter, not to attend Parliament that day. Fawkes checked the undercroft on the 30th of October, and he saw that nothing had been disturbed and discovered, but Monteagle's letter was shown to King James I, who ordered a search of the cellars. This occurred on the 5th of November in the early hours, hours before Parliament would open. With this, Fawkes was found, and he had in his possession a watch, a slow match, and was apprehended as he was leaving the cellar around midnight. The barrels of gunpowder were found hidden under large piles of firewood and coal. Fawkes refused to give his real identity to the authorities, and said he was John Johnson, when he was taken to the king for interrogation. 
When he was taken into the privy chamber, he was asked what he was doing and shouted defiantly at the king to blow you Scottish beggars back to your native mountains and he said it was regretful that the plan had been foiled. He admitted he had planned to block the Houses of Parliament and James I was shocked by his resolution and determination but to extract more information on who was a co-conspirator, James I in his own handwriting authorised the torture of Guy Fawkes. He said that to begin with, lighter tortures should be applied using devices such as the manacles before more severe methods should be used. It was Sir William Wadd, the Lieutenant of the Tower of London, who was responsible for the torture. He was given a list of questions devised by the King and Fawkes was held in a room which is now known as the Guy Fawkes Room, where his interrogation took place. Following a routine search, Wadd found a note addressed to Fawkes, but he continued to say nothing to anyone. On the 6th of November in the evening, he spoke with Wad and said nothing except that he planned to blow up Parliament in the name of the Catholic faith. Fawkes was then told to rest before his interrogation would continue and become more severe. He would be brutalised until he gave up the names of the co-conspirators. He had been tortured on the manacles and was suspended in the air by his arms and beaten for a number of hours, but he continued to refuse to give over anything. On the 7th of November, he gave over his true identity and told the guards there were five people involved in the plot to begin with. He said he would not name anyone, but instead the guards applied the most extreme torture. He was first taken to the rack, the infamous stretching device that would cause horrific injuries. The rack was designed to stretch humans to the extremes, and people even died on the device with their bones snapping, joints dislocating and ligaments tearing. It was brutal. Forks continued to refuse to hand over anything, and with this was placed on the rack, and he was racked several times, with guards turning the crank of the device tougher each time, and Fawkes was having more injuries from the ordeal. It was said that this broke him. In the evening of the 8th of November, he had revealed information about the co-conspirators because of the rack. He gave more than they believed, naming a number of men. But on the 10th of November, he then signed his confession. It was said that, on the 10th, this declaration was acknowledged before the Lord's Commissioners, and is signed in a tremulous hand, Guido. The signature is supposed to have been extorted by the rack, and the prisoner to have fainted before completing it. Fawkes's torture completely shattered him, and his handwriting before and after was indecipherable, after the rack left him a shaking mess. It was reported that Fawkes confessed nothing the first racking, but did so when told he must come to it again and again, from day to day, till he should have delivered his whole knowledge. The eight plotters who were named and captured were brought to trial on the 27th of January 1606. Fawkes shared a journey from the Tower of London to Westminster Hall with his plotters. They were then held in a star chamber and then displayed on a scaffold and the king and his royal family were secretly watching. The charges were read out and Fawkes was identified as Guido Fawkes and he pleaded not guilty. The jury found him and the other conspirators guilty and with this they were sentenced to death. The Attorney General said that each of the condemned would be hanged, drawn and quartered. They were to be put to death, halfway between heaven and earth, as unworthy as both. Their genitals cut off and burned in front of their eyes, and their bowels and hearts removed, before being decapitated, then quartered, being cut into four pieces. The executions of the gunpowder plotters took place in two sessions. The first took place on the 30th of January 1606, but Fawkes was executed the following day, alongside Thomas Winter, Ambrose Rookwood and Robert Keyes. All three were taken from the Tower of London on wattled hurdles and were dragged through the streets of London behind horses. The crowds lined the streets and hurled abuse and objects at them. They then arrived at their place of execution, Old Palace Yard in Westminster. They were symbolically to be executed in front of the building they intended to destroy and blow up. But Fawkes would not go the way in which the authorities intended and he wanted to end things on his own terms. After watching the others being brutally hanged, drawn and quartered, Guy Fawkes was the last to be brought onto the scaffold. He was led up the stairs and he asked for the forgiveness of the King, and also of England, but he claimed he would die a Catholic, and remained in the crosses and idle ceremonies of the Catholic faith. As he had been significantly weakened and injured by his brutal torture, the struggling Fawkes was then led towards the ladder, where the noose was about to be tied around his neck. However quickly and dramatically, Fawkes then jumped to his death from the ladder and with this crashed off the scaffold and instantly his neck was broken, killing him. He managed with this to avoid the pain 
and suffering of the latter part of his hanging during a quartering process, as it would be performed on a very much alive individual. But Fawkes was already dead, but the execution has spared no spectacle, and that day continued with Fawkes' execution, beheading his lifeless body, burning his entrails, and cutting him into four pieces. Fawkes' remains were then sent to the four corners of the kingdom, for display to act as a warning to traitors. But the gunpowder plot and the efforts of Guy Fawkes are commemorated each year in England and Britain on the 5th of November on bonfire night. If he would have been successful, Fawkes would have been regarded as the most serious traitor in history, and someone who would have brought down the whole of the English monarchy, as well as the government and parliament. Some people claim that the last person to enter parliament with honest intentions was the man who was caught under the undercrofts of the centre of government four centuries ago with 30 barrels of gunpowder. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.